Darren, we've recently heard about the death in Britain of Prince Philip and he was approximately, I think it was only a matter of weeks before his uh, 100th birthday. Now obviously he's married to the Queen, Queen of England, but we also hear the term the Queen of Australia and I was wondering if you can give the listeners and viewers an example or an explanation as to what the Queen of Australia actually is. Okay, well, in 1952, the, um, uh, the Dominions all got together in England and they decided to divide up the indissoluble crown. And what that means is there was only one crown of England and only one queen. And the Queen ruled over her dominions as British dominions. And what they wanted to do is roll in decolonisation and release the dominions from the rule of England. And so what they did is they dissolved the indissoluble uh, crown. And what that allowed them to do was to create different crowns for the different realms. So. Now this thing that couldn't be dissolved and was one and, and um, unseparable, uh, uh, this particular crown was now being divided between all the dominions. And so we got the Queen of Canada, the Queen of New Zealand, the Queen of Australia, the Queen of South Africa, etc, etc. So this would all pertain to the Commonwealth countries? Yes, exactly. Only to the Commonwealth countries. So now all of a sudden, there was a new crown in each of the realms, but the English Lord didn't provide for it. And there's where the dilemma lies, because, for example, in Australia, our Constitution doesn't allow for that to happen, because one of the covering clauses of the Constitution, the, one of the foundation parts of it, is that the Queen shall be the Queen in the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. And the role of the Queen in the Constitution is that particular Queen in that particular role. So in 1973 the uh, Whitlam government wrote an act called the Royal Styles and Titles Act of 1973 and they created a new crown separate and independent from the UK crown under the Queen of Australia. Now there's a problem with that and the problem being is that the Constitution only provides for certain lawmaking powers. And those powers are limited in Section 51. There's 39 lawmaking powers. The exclusive powers are found at Section 52. And there's a few other areas where the Parliament can change particular parts. It's called until the Parliament otherwise prescribes. But these limited lawmaking powers do not include a power to create a separate, a separate independent monarch. And the problem is, is that in the preamble to the lawmaking power um, sections, it says that the parliament may make laws subject to the constitution. Well, subject to the constitution means it can't be outside of what the constitution provides, which is the queen and the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. So they've got a dilemma. They've written this law to create the Queen of Australia in excess of the power that the Constitution grants them. And so we noticed this and we actually wrote to the, uh, the Attorney General's office and we've asked them, can you please provide the head of power that you rely on so as to create the Queen of Australia? And the Attorney General's office replied with, we have no power to create the Queen of Australia. There is no power to be relied upon. Now that's where the dilemma uh, lies because this, this Queen of Australia, what we've actually explored is, and in all of the, um, uh, the government rhetoric which they write, they say to you that it is generally accepted that the Queen of Australia, the, the Queen of Australia is the Queen of Australia. And so we, we started to pull these words apart that they were providing us. General acceptance. We don't, we're not interested in what's 
generally accepted, what does the law say? What is legal and what is proper and what is allowed by the Constitution? Because the Constitution is a book of rules that uh, constrain the government in, the, in their powers. They can't go beyond those powers. Yet, in this instance, they have. So, once we've exposed that, they keep on relying on the fact that it is generally accepted that the Queen of Australia is the Queen within the Commonwealth. But that's the problem. When they, when they took away the, uh, the Queen of the United Kingdom, they actually dissolved the Commonwealth of Australia. The Commonwealth of Australia was under the crown of the United Kingdom. That actual entity as established under the Act no longer exists. And if you go to the Royal Styles and Titles Act, you can actually see this in the language of how the Act is written and that the Queen of Australia is for application in Australia and not the Commonwealth of Australia. So it's talking about Australia in a geographical sense and not in a political sense. And so there's a game of word mastery and trickery going on with different interpretations in the Interpretation Act and this general acceptance that they expect you to rely on because they believe it.